Welcome to Heart Speak Podcast, episode 143, Truth or Consequences. Well, hello there. Wherever you are in the world, you are welcome. Thank you for inviting me into your life. And how's your week been? We are heading towards a strawberry full moon on June the 24th. And when I was reading about this, it reminded me of strawberries and cream, a Wimbledon tennis tradition. And that this fortnight, the last week of June, beginning of July, used to always be seen as a rainy fortnight. We always used to say, ah, now we know why it's raining, because they're about to play tennis. Now, I know for you Brits, you've had enough of rain. So I'm wishing you all a good strawberry fortnight, where you have plenty of strawberries and cream and you get out and about, even though some of the restrictions are still in place. It also reminded me of going strawberry picking, so that when you would go into this place where you could pick your own, you would have your basket weighed at the beginning, basket weighed in the end, and you'd pay for the strawberries that you'd actually put into your basket. What you didn't pay for was the ones that you put into your stomach. It was a good thing they didn't weigh us. And I remember when we would get home with these baskets of strawberries, we'd all say, oh, I can't face another strawberry <laughs> because we'd eaten so many. So I hope you are enjoying yourself, whether it's about strawberries or enjoying some or enjoying your winter, wherever you are in the world. And this full moon that's coming up with a sun in Cancer, moon in Capricorn, really is talking about comfort and family and home. This is a very Cancerian energies. And opposite with the moon in Capricorn, Capricorn's all about integrity, wholeness, holding ourselves true to ourselves, being accountable. And so this is a time when we are going to see around the world much more accountability. You're saying, I hope so. <laughs> because over the past two years, Telling the truth has had consequences and not good consequences. And so if you've been holding a truth in yourself, if you've been knowing something but be scared of speaking about it, I hope that you will be able to express yourself more fully now, feeling more confident in yourself to follow your true path. Because with Jupiter sextiling this full moon, we're seeing a chance to be unlimited, to be expansive. And so this is an, not a time to shut down and take yourselves into, back into that lockdown and that cocoon, but to expand ourselves, to step out and say, what is my true path? How do I want to walk this? And allow ourselves to recognize ourselves truly as light beings who are having a physical experience. Now, before I go more into that, let's just finish off what's going on in the skies. So as I say, Jupiter, even though it's now going retrograde, is still in Pisces. So it's bringing us these unlimited opportunities, this being able to ride the waves of this new energy that's coming into the world. So you might have noticed your dreams are more vivid, your ideas are more vivid, uh, you're getting more I, ideas and excitement about the possibilities out there for you. But at the same time, Jupiter in Pisces, and as I've explained, Jupiter went very fast through Aquarius and then into Pisces, which is the next sign. Now it's turning back and it's going to eventually in July go back into Aquarius again, but then it will go forward in October and go back into Pisces again. So what does this all mean? What, what are you talking about? So Jupiter in Aquarius is Jupiter is expansion, Aquarius is new technologies, new ideas in the line of community living. How do we come together in a better way? And so I love the idea that Jupiter in Aquarius, which we're going to see more of towards the end of this year, is going to say, how can we come together as community? And so people coming together to maybe just meet up or to have a farmer's market or to sell things or to gather together or as we're seeing to stand together against authoritarian figures 
that really don't have authority over what we learn, what we, we want to eat, what we want to experience in our own bodies. So I am seeing groups coming together, uh, you know, grassroots groups, communities stepping up and saying, I'm sorry, we don't believe that the truth that you are telling us is in, in integrity to what is good for the community. And that's what we're really saying. Does the truth, again, back to truth and consequences, does the truth that you're telling us actually have consequences that are going to be favorable for us all or only for the few? And that's really the crux of this podcast, why I thought about truth and consequences. Because if we're going to follow a truth and be honest, we need to also be accountable for the consequences of following that truth. And I believe that more and more of us are stepping out and saying, actually, your truth does not have consequences that I wish to follow. <laughs> okay, that's a way of me saying this. And I love the fact that it's a really Aquarian way, and remember Saturn is also in Aquarius, to actually say that everybody is accountable and everybody is self-conscious and everybody has a voice. That is the Aquarian way. And Saturn is going to be in Aquarius, you know, for another year or two. So really recognizing that this is not about restriction and only one person having a voice or only, I don't know, the board members having a voice. This is about, come on, step up, have a voice, be accountable for your voice, and let's all listen to everybody else's opinions and create as a community a collective future, something that is true and with consequences that are good for all of us. And that is not what's happening. We're seeing just at this moment small groups making choices for the majority. This is not the way forward, never will be and never can be. And they're doing it by almost magical tricks. They're playing on people's fears, playing on people's shame, bringing up guilt, bringing up shame. I talked about this last time. This is not acceptable. So those who are still playing magic games, which are very Piscean energy, those who are still believing that they are the leaders and everybody's going to follow them, I'm sorry, your time has come. Get ready to leave. Because even though we're seeing, as I say, Jupiter in Pisces and it's going retrograde, what it's really saying is, I choose to experience my light beingness, my spiritual beingness, but not by following someone who tells me how I should do that. Those days are gone. Those days are over. Okay? So if you can remind me who I am, thank you. That's the Aquarian way. But if you're telling me I need to do this because you know the truth and I don't, sorry, not for going that way anymore. That's what's happening at this time. Everybody, everybody, it's not about people in a hierarchical leadership position. Everybody, I'll listen to anybody but I will follow my truth. And when someone can only get me to follow them through threats, through fear, through shame, through guilt, you are definitely not the person that I wish to follow. Now you can hear me speak from my moon in Aquarius. I am always the person who says, I don't care what you are telling me I should or shouldn't do through fear, because as an Aquarian energy, I'm pretty detached from that emotional power games. Thank goodness, because in other areas of my astrology chart, I can get very pulled into that. But my moon in Aquarius is my saving grace to say, actually, I don't respond to power games, emotional games, emotional uh, neediness. It's really not interesting to me. My moon is what nurtures me. Emotional power games don't nurture me. So when someone says, oh, if you don't love me, I'll leave you. 
I'm sorry, my approach is going to be, there's the door, don't let it hit you as you leave. That's who I am. Maybe some of you also have Aquarian energy. But it's been my saving grace because other parts of me can get very involved with people and very involved with their emotional games. And I'm always the first person who will leave a room if someone is not being respectful. I remember being in a very large auditorium with some spiritual teacher who was very well known. And he came in late, which was disrespectful. He had been drinking, which was disrespectful if you're about to give a talk, he was drunk. And he then started to swear at us all. And he at one point said, you know, if you leave this auditorium before I finish, then you're a moron. I mean, he used a lot of swear words, which I won't use. And everybody sat in their seats, even though what he was doing was so abusive because he was swearing and cursing at people in the audience. And I just got up and walked out. And everybody watched, like, how, how can she just walk out on something when she's being threatened? It was like, that doesn't have any power over me. And I remember the organisers of the meeting said, we knew you'd be the first one out. <laughs> And it's never been my way to be really susceptible to such threats. And my parents always taught that nobody's better, nobody's worse. In other words, treat everybody as an equal. Never give anybody more authority, never give them less. Everybody's an equal. And that's how I see life. I see people as equal souls, having their path journey, walking their path journey, helping each other that's how we are and so this Aquarian energy Saturn is in Aquarius Jupiter is going to go back into Aquarius and Pluto will be going into Aquarius much later on and is going to be the future and what's happening now there are people who are trying to grab the power power grabbers they're trying to hold on to the old paradigm where they had control over people and I think as I've said before they must have been amazed how they could bring the whole world to a standstill, almost the whole world, and everybody went into lockdown and everybody went into fear and everybody did what they were told to do. And they must have gone, my goodness, don't we have a lot of power over people? Well, can I just tell you, those times are finished. You may have felt that you had the power, but in the last 18 months, people are waking up, aren't we? Everybody is waking up. I'm watching people say, not I'm going to do it in a different way because these teachers are telling me. I'm hearing people speak from their hearts saying, this isn't working for me. This isn't the way I wish to live my life. And it comes to a place where something that I was listening to earlier in the week, it was from William Henry. And he was talking about back in 2002 at how he'd had the revelation that as we are developing our light body as we are connecting more fully to our spirit being as i've spoken about connecting more fully to the fact that we are star beings we have our junk dna is full of our knowledge of who we truly are this is he saw an organic development this new wave of light coming in through consequences we are awakening this is an organic awakening that is happening a very healthy one but he saw back in that time that there would be also the trickster who was trying to appear as they were bringing the same energy to us. We are awakening you into that space, but doing it inorganically. And I know I've heard other people speak about these two words, organic and inorganic. Inorganic is, in its purest terms, is moving towards transhumanism, biotechnology, really making out that we can replace this feeble physical body and physical mind and even the soul with a much higher technological body and mind. So you won't have to think, you won't have to feel, you won't have to have a physical body that could let you down. Hey, your physical body let you down, let's replace it. Hey, your mind seems to get in the way. Let's replace that. Let's, 
let's genetically engineer out any problems. Hey, your soul seems to just keep telling you to do different things. Let's just get rid of that. That is the inorganic way in which there are a group of individuals would like us to go in that direction. And if you remember my talk on ETs a couple of podcasts away, where we talked about the greys, this is what the greys did. The greys engineered, genetically engineered out emotions, physical issues, soul issues. Let's like, say, oh, this soul, it just keeps getting in the way. And let's get rid of God because that seems to have some connection to that. And they became so robotic that they could no longer reproduce. And so what they had been doing, and remember, they had been taking the DNA from humans so that they could literally feed themselves back into what we considered our natural selves, our organic selves. So please remember that when someone's saying, oh, climate change is caused by eating too much meat, or climate change is caused by having a car, or climate change is caused by you going out into the world and enjoying yourself. We need to shut all of that down. Please see that this is coming from organ inorganic mechanisms. This is being primed by those who say, we can feed you with food by you just staying in your house. We can bring you unnatural light. You don't need to go outside. We can give you everything you need and you can have a super body, a super mind, a super whatever. But you are no longer real. You are no longer organic. This is not the truth. This is the consequences of misinformation. And so what I've been looking at is what does it mean to be a soul? What does it mean to have my soul influence me? What does it mean for me to be a human being. And I think everything that was taken away from us during the last 18 months has shown us what's is most important to us. Maybe it wasn't all taken away, but touch, conversations, hugs, smiles, nature, communicating with nature, eating fresh food, communicating with animals feeling alive, feeling free, feeling that you can change your mind in any moment. You can say, no, I'm going to go and do this today. No, I'm going to, no, not having to think, can I do that? Can I do that? Can I, am I free enough? Maybe getting in your car and going somewhere, getting on your bike, going for a walk, but having that freedom to make choices, having the accessibility. And even though we've all appreciated the the ability to communicate through the internet. There's nothing like a good hug. There's nothing like face-to-face -face contact. There's nothing like standing with someone or sitting at tea or dinner with them at a meeting that I might attend and having that conversation that just sparks us. We can do that, but that interaction is what makes us so human. And that interaction is so rich, it's an expansive. And this is the direction I would like you to look at is what makes you human? What makes you feel alive? What freedoms are important to each of us? It's not about whether I eat meat or whether I meat, eat vegetables. I don't want to take a tablet as my food. I want to ingest that live food. And in the direction I'm going, I'm needing less food the more time I spend in nature. Because when I'm in nature, I am literally feeding myself with that live energy of the plant kingdoms, the stone kingdoms, the animal kingdoms. That's my food. And the sunshine, the vitamin D, the connection to the stars, going and looking at the stars, this is food for me. And I can travel, whether travel is restricted or not. But being able to enjoy this planet is part of the travel. Why I travel is not just to go and stay in a hotel, etc. It is about, I love going out, meeting people, seeing that people are not so dissimilar, but also enjoying their differences. This world of diversity. 
I don't want a world where everybody's the same. I don't want a world where I'm not expanded by meeting someone who's different. These are things that feed my soul. What feeds your soul? Singing, creating, cooking, meeting your children, being with your grandchildren. What is it that feeds our soul? Because that's what is an organic growth for us. That is the truth of who we are. And there are consequences. There are good, positive consequences when we do that because we can feel ourselves expanding. And there are negative consequences when we don't do that. And nobody knows what is true for you or me. Following our truth is the only way that we can expand and grow and live in integrity, in wholeness. And when we do that, we then encourage others to do the same. So I'm going to finish with just coming back to what's going on in the stars. So I've spoken about the Capricorn full moon, this time of living in integrity, this time for following rules that work for you, not giving authority to someone else. This time for families. Now we have Venus is in Cancer at the moment. Again, a wonderful time for coming together, meeting up with people. I loved going to a restaurant recently on Father's Day that was absolutely full of families enjoying themselves. All ages, all generations. So important to have family time. And family can mean people who are not part of your blood family. Being with friends who are like family. Meeting your neighbours as family. This is what we are looking for at this time. Meeting you, you are my family. I love it. And it's opposite Pluto and Capricorn. And Pluto and Capricorn, despite what I keep hearing people speak about, Pluto is feminine. She is the great transformer. It's not about authority figures. She is trying to transform every institution. And at present, it's the school system, the education system, the medical system, the legal system, the political system, and the financial systems. All of those systems need to be transformed. They are unhealthy. So Pluto is saying, no, you're not here to do that. You're not here to create your own authority of how this needs to happen. If you're teaching, you teach. You don't teach people what to think. You teach them how to think. You don't teach people what they should eat. You teach them how they can look after their body. You are teaching them to be their own healer, not to take your, be the authority over their healing. Same in every language. So Venus opposite Pluto in Capricorn is meaning that we're transforming relationships. And it can be a bit of a rocky experience, even though we want to love everybody, that's very much Cancerian energy, make everybody happy. Maybe some of the relationships we're in aren't actually making us happy. And maybe some of them are actually destructive or we're having to jump through hoops to have that relationship. Or maybe they're actually abusive and we haven't actually noticed that because we just want everybody to be happy. Pluto and Capricorn opposite Venus and Cancer are saying, Time to transform some of your relationships. Having the courage to cut the ties, even though someone might be a family member or you've known these people for a long time. It's time. Unhealthy relationships where there is not integrity need to be cut now. Finally, we still have good old Saturn squaring Uranus. We talked about that before. New ideas coming in, Saturn, authority. But it can also be these new ideas need to be focused. They need to be limited. So where are new ideas being allowed to develop without any control on them? This is really the Saturn Uranus square. It is we all need to have decisions being made that are true and where those who are doing what they're doing understand the consequences of not acting for the good of humanity, for the good of the community. There we go, my friends. This was quite a complex podcast to put together. 
because I believe that we are at the very edge of something amazing that is happening for all of us. And I'm excited by that. I do understand that some of us are a little impatient. We want it to happen quicker. What I keep hearing from my guidance is they, they, we don't want to just change things on a superficial level. The changes that are happening are huge. They are multifold. And what I'm being told is that the changes we're in are happening slowly because they need to last for thousands of years. So be patient. Everything is moving in the direction it needs to be moved in. But it, if it's going to be effective and true for thousands of years, it has to be taken slowly and everybody has to be brought into the fold. Nobody must be allowed to continue actions that are not in harmony with the whole. So until next time, my dear friends, Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye now. Thanks for listening to the HeartSpeak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all HeartSpeak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. HeartSpeak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and now playing on iHeartRadio. You can also watch the archive podcast on YouTube. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, including her newest Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of HeartSpeak.